Hello and welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 22nd of March. Now, I want to look at a very uh, large Israeli study, about three quarters of a million people, carried out before the vaccination programme began, uh, that says that there's no increase in myocarditis and pericarditis as a result of COVID infection. Now, this completely contradicts the UK and the US official government data. And there's no answer to this paradox. It, it is a blatant paradox. The Israeli data is saying one thing. The UK and the US official government data are saying other things. Well, not so much the US government uh, and the UK government data, but their, their official statements. Let's have a look at it now. It really is quite interesting. Now, let's start off with some of the data here. Now, this is from the, the Israeli study, and here we see the myocarditis. So these are patients who have not had COVID, and that's their, their rate of myocarditis. And they're patients who uh, have not had COVID in blue, in light blue, patients that have had COVID in red. And basically, we see that there's not really any difference. I mean, these minor differences here are just due to statistical noise, really. Um, but we're certainly not seeing a clear trend where COVID patients have more myocarditis. That is clear. Now, when we look at the pericarditis, it's even more startling, actually. Uh, this is the pericarditis data here. Uh, so these are patients who have not had COVID and we actually see that they get more pericarditis, bizarrely. Patients that have had COVID get uh, less pericarditis and really quite a significant gap there. It's almost, we're not saying this of course, but it, it almost looks like COVID is protecting against uh, pericarditis. So yeah, pretty convincing graphs. Let's look at this data in a little more detail here. So this, this is the study. I always put the, uh, I always give you the references of course here's the actual study uh, here public domain you can download the full text which is pretty useful and here's the contradictory data from the UK government example uh, that we'll be talking about shortly but no two ways around it there is a definite contradiction between what the UK government is saying and this uh, this Israeli uh, data um, quite uncomfortable really when you've got these blatant contradictions now this is the study. The authors declared no uh, conflict of interest, <coughs> which, of course, is always important to look at these days. Uh, the, author, the authors are not getting paid to write their paper. Myocarditis and pericarditis are potential post-acute cardiac uh, sequelae of COVID-19 infection. Well, th they're saying that that's what they're investigating. Arising from the adaptive immune response, so it's the immunological response to uh, viral components or viral uh, antigens regardless of where those antigens came from that are causing this inflammation so they, they aim to study the incidence of post-acute COVID-19 myocarditis and pericarditis retrospective cohort study now they had 196,000 nearly 197,000 adults after infection so one heck of a good cohort so they're the patients that had infection and they had an even larger cohort to act as a control this is from one of the big healthcare organisations in Israel. And as we said, this data is collected March uh, 2020 to January 2020. Now, Israel was pretty quick off the mark with its um, COVID vaccination programme. As far as I remember, it started about the 20th of December 2020. But of course, it would take some time to build up. And indeed, it did. So basically, we can say this is pretty well in the pre-vaccine era. I think we're fairly safe in saying that this is essentially in the pre-vaccine era. As we say, cohort group was absolutely huge, uh, nearly 600,000 adults. Uh, age and sex match matched with the group that had actually had uh, COVID. So we've got two really good, uh, two really good comparisons there for, for analysis. Uh, COVID infection cohort, uh, nine post-COVID patients developed myocarditis, 0.0046. So very, very low. And of course, remember, this is, um, this is not Omicron, which is a much milder disease. This is in the times of the, uh, this is when the Wuhan variant was still the predominant variant, probably into some early alpha times as well. Um, but much more dangerous variants than we have now. And yet a remarkably low level from pure COVID in the pre-vaccine era. So it really is quite interesting. 11 patients with pericarditis, again, 0 0.0056. Uh, pretty low. Uh, Non-COVID infection cohort, 27 patients, 0 0.046. Uh, 
0046 and uh, 50 tribe pericarditis again 0.0088 and uh, these are age adjusted uh, hazard ratios and it's 0.96 so we actually see that um, patients who've had COVID are slightly less likely to get uh, inflammatory heart disease than patients who've had COVID from this data and they are 95% certain that this number here this hazard ratio if it was one, of course, then there would be exactly the same risk of myocarditis, pericarditis in both cohorts. The, the 95% sure is between 0.93 and 1. So we, we can clearly see that there's no statistical difference uh, be, between, between these, these numbers. Now, just to check the data, they did a couple of other things that are interesting. Male sex adjusted hazard ratio well, men are nearly four and a half times more likely to get uh, myocarditis than women. And this is consistent with data that we have seen from around the world before. Not surprising, really. And uh, for pericarditis, it was uh, uh, the adjusted hazard ratio for men at 1.93. So men nearly twice as likely to get uh, pericarditis. So myocarditis, especially way more common in men than women, not surprising, and indicates to me that this data is, is uh, likely to be valid because this is consistent with other things that we're seeing. Post-COVID infection was not associated with either myocarditis or pericarditis, so 1.08 for myocarditis uh, and adjusted hazard ratio of 0.53 uh, for, for that should be pericarditis, my apologies. Because as we saw, um, there's many, uh, in terms of pericarditis, um, pericarditis, COVID infection actually seems to be protective. Fewer people who had COVID actually got pericarditis. A bit strange that, and I don't know if there's any uh, anything going on there, but it's certainly not indicating that COVID is causing pericarditis, that is for sure, from this Israeli data. Um Direct quote from the authors, we did not observe an, uh, an increased incidence of neither pericarditis or myocarditis in adult patients recovered from COVID-19 infection. So that's pretty conclusive. Uh, from the Israeli data, people recovering from COVID did not have more myocarditis, did not have more pericarditis. That's what that data shows now. The UK government data here, now uh, pathetically, uh, this UK government data hasn't been updated since, uh, well, it's a, it's a year, 21st of March 2022, this was updated. Um, when I first looked at this, I thought it was 2023, but it's not, it's actually 2022. So, um, very, uh, well, why, why haven't the UK government kept up with this really important issue? They just don't seem to have done year out of date anyway uk health security agency uh, now they give background 2017 there was about 2000 hospital admissions for myocarditis two-thirds of cases were in men which is what we see typically median age is typically young men 33 mostly viral infection and they know this because when you look at the biopsies or sometimes sadly the postmortems is associated with inf infiltration of lymphocytes which are antiviral immune cells um, presentation of myocarditis so very often it's subclinical you might not even know it's there until you do something like a uh, strenuous exercise but uh, there can be heart failure chest pain shortness of breath palpitations and fatigue as we know a dilated cardiomyopathy and chronic heart failure can be sequelae of these so a uh, dilated heart failure means the ventricles are dilated and floppy and don't contract properly and heart failure of course means that the body can't generate enough cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands of the body, usually resulting in venous backlog and edema, um, sogginess in the tissues. Um, now, sudden death syndrome. Myocarditis is implicated in 12%. Now, of course, tragically, people do just sometimes drop dead. Thankfully, not that common, but, but more common than you might think. Um, but 12% of sudden deaths what i would call spontaneous death syndrome uh, are more common um uh well 12 percent are caused by myocarditis uh under the age of 40 so under the age of 40 it's a common cause of death myocarditis acute pericarditis similar presentation uh, very often the two can go together myopericarditis 
constrictive pericarditis is uncommon. So, of course, the pericardium is uh, surrounding the heart, peri, around the outside. And if it becomes fibrous, it uh, it's like scar tissue and it loses uh, any uh, ability to... It basically starts con- contracting down on the heart. That that can happen, but thankfully it's fairly, fairly uncommon. Um, now, can myocarditis or pericarditis be caused by coronavirus COVID-19 infection? Now, the Israeli data clearly shows not. This is from the UK government website. It is now recognised that COVID-19 infection can lead to myocarditis and pericarditis. So there is a clear contradiction between the Israeli data on getting on for 800,000 people and the UK government data. The Israeli data says there's no difference after COVID infection. The uh, UK government guidelines uh, websites say there is. Now, of course, the UK government give evidence for this. I've put some in here. Do do check it out for yourself. That's an article that does seem to show there is. Um, it's a contradiction. Uh, professional athletes are an atypical group. Now, again, this was published in... Uh, May 2021, so this is after vaccination. Now, unfortunately, I did look through this article just before we came on to the uh, recording, and I couldn't find out that they took vaccination into account, which was rather... Um, well, I think the best word I could use about that would be unfortunate. Um, anyway, they didn't. Um, uh, um, unless I missed it, I didn't read through it. Uh, so, uh, 1,597 athletes with recent SARS-CoV-2 infection... Um, this was data from March the 1st, 2020, through to the 15th of December uh, 2020. So that is pre-vaccine era, actually. Um, 0.31 were diagnosed with myocarditis using a symptom-based screening. 2.3 diagnosed with uh, clinical or subclinical myocarditis using cardiac magnetic resonance screening. So the UK government data, so so what the UK government is doing here, when you think about it, is they're saying um, that it is now recognised that COVID-19 can lead to myocarditis and pericarditis, which we've always thought it could. Uh, But part of the evidence here is from athletes in the uh, pre-vaccination era. So um, there's two variables here which need to be teased apart really isn't there and uh, finally um is there an association of myocarditis and pericarditis following covid vaccination now again this is from the uk government site uh, so we are using official government data here and and it gives all this albeit uh albeit uh, pathetically um, a year out of date but there's a lot of data there anyway um, many studies have now shown there is an increased risk of myocarditis following vaccination with mRNA vaccines I've just put four of them in there for your perusal especially in younger men under the age of 40 and many studies have only limited follow-up why has the government not followed these up of course is the big question and why is the website a year out of uh, date So I don't have an answer for you, I'm afraid. I can just point out the paradox. Um, UK and US government sites are saying there is uh, clearly, uh, clearly and unambiguously, uh, they're saying that um, COVID can result in myocarditis and pericarditis. That Israeli data is showing that there was no increase in myocarditis and pericarditis after COVID infection in the pre-vaccination era. This is a a contradiction, and we look to uh, government websites to clarify this shortly. But at the moment, we are in that uh, we are in that paradoxical, uh, confusing situation. Um, Let's hope we get clarity soon. And uh, thank you for watching. Sorry if this was a bit frustrating. There's no definitive answer on this at the moment, but uh, that's where we're at. But it would, it would be a good help if the UK government looked at the last year's data and got all that crunched and then told us something a little more up to date. Thank you for watching.